Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to uh, my talk today on uh, real-time stream processing for NLP at scale. Uh, we're going to be delving into some very interesting topics, so I'm quite excited uh, to dive right into it. So uh, just to start with a little bit about myself, uh, my name is Alejandro Salcedo. Uh, I am uh, Engineering Director at Cell and Technologies and Chief Scientist at the Institute for Ethical AI, as well as a uh, member at large of the ACM. Uh, to give you a bit of a brief uh, of uh, Selvin, uh, we are primarily an open source uh, company. We are leading uh, one of the most popular uh, machine learning deployment frameworks in Kubernetes. And uh, we're going to be delving into some examples using this open source framework today. Uh, the Institute is a research center uh, focused uh, on responsible AI and the development of frameworks uh, around this. Um, and just as a heads up, uh, the Institute is part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, and this is quite an exciting piece, given that this allows the Institute to focus on quite practitioner uh, specific uh, initiatives. Um, so today, uh, specifically, we're going to be delving into a conceptual introduction to stream processing together with motivations. We're going to be diving into machine learning um, for training the model as well as uh, for real time. And we're going to be covering some of the trade off across some of the approaches and tools, as well as our hands on uh, use case. Uh, just a bit of a, a reminder, uh, you can find the slides at uh, this link, bit.ly slash Selden Kafka, which we will come, which will come with all of the links to the respective examples. So what we're going to be doing today is we're going to be tackling uh, a challenge uh, where we're going to be using uh, a large data set with 200,000 comments coming from uh, the Reddit uh, website. Uh, we're going to be training these comments to be able to predict uh, whether the comments themselves would have, would have been removed by moderators, uh, ultimately to see if we can uh, create something that uh, will help uh, improve, I guess, the front page of the internet, right? We'll be fixing uh, the front page of the internet. Um, of course, uh, before going into the stream processing, we want to do a trip to the past or more specifically the present. This is the concept of ETL. And as you can see in this architectural diagram, um, ETL consists of extract, transform, load. Basically taking data from somewhere, doing something with it, transforming it, and loading it somewhere else. But specifically, there are multiple variations, things like ETL, ELT, EL, ET, LT, and many, many others. And the challenge is that you know, all of these are relevant in some uh, specific use case and situation. And there are a broad range of tools that will be useful for different contexts. Um, you know, for example, for EL, you have NiFi or Fluent. Uh, ETL, you have Uzi, Airflow. ELT, you have Elasticsearch, et cetera, et cetera. So there's, there's a broad range of different tools just in the ETL space. And this then starts opening up some of the discussions that appear in the stream processing perspective, this batch versus streaming piece, the spectrum of data processing where um, Ultimately, with batch, you have a limited uh, data set with a start and an end, where the streaming, you have that, that concept of continuously processing pieces. However, one of the things that we tend to see is that it's not just batch versus streaming, but it tends to be batch and streaming. You're seeing the right tool for the challenge, making sure that you're using uh, you know, batch when necessary and then streaming on top as well. And more importantly, is that there is a discussion where the, these two differing worlds are being unified. The question of whether you could actually treat batch, batches and streams in a very similar manner, where uh, streams are, are actually, or batches themselves, are actually streams with a limited start and end, right? So from that perspective, you can unify also the processing of those uh, 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 diverging worlds. So diving into the stream processing concepts, we can see a lot of terminology that is used in this area. You may have already come across the concept of windows. This is basically saying you have a stream of data and you may want to actually perform some stateful processing across a specific start and end of that stream. This can be toppling windows, which basically that they don't intersect. This could be sliding windows that you actually take 
that start and end that goes sliding across the data that is coming in. You also can have the concept of checkpoints. Checkpoints are basically, as you would imagine by the name, it allows you to say, I am processing data from a stream. If suddenly the, the actual processor dies, I would be able to know exactly where to continue from, right? So that's another important uh, component. Then you have the concept of watermarking. So this basically says, if I'm, if I'm running a window uh, that has a start and an end, what happens if suddenly a data point that should have come during that window came later? Well, watermarks allow you to keep a buffer to be able to say, I want to count data that arrives later within those windows. Right, so this is basically some high level co concepts in stream processing that although are out, outside of the scope of this talk, we're still gonna want to use them um, as, as, as conceptual pieces within the stream processing world. And as you would imagine in the stream processors, you may have more of these components being provided for you so that you don't have to deal with the under, underlying complexities to, deal, to, to have them. Some of the tools that are available at your disposal for stream processing include things like Flink, Kafka Streams, Spark Streaming, Forest, Python, and Seldom, which we're gonna be using in this specific context. But before that, before we actually talk about the processing, we need to talk about what is the thing it, that is being processed. And for that, we're gonna be talking about the concept of uh, the machine learning workflow. And this basically consists of two basic streams. The first one, which uh, revolves around the training of a model. Basically, you get some data uh, that you want to use for a model to learn from, and you convert it into features that the model can actually read, and then you are able to iteratively uh, 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 train the model until you're happy with that specific model. Once you're happy with the current accuracy or performance metric, that's where you can deploy the model, and the new unseen data can be processed by that model that you have been trained. Specifically in our use case, we're gonna be using the, the, the two, two, two sets of scikit-learn and Spacey. And what we're gonna be doing is taking data set, which is basically Reddit comments, and predict whether this would have been moderated by uh, the admins of the page. So what is going to be happening for our model to be able to predict and learn from this data we're gonna have first the text as it arrives. We're gonna be uh, using a text cleaning uh, component, a tokenizing component, which we're gonna see what it means, which is using Spacey, a vectorizer component, and then a logistic regression machine learning model. What does that look like? Well, let's see in more practical terms. If we have a, an input data that says, uh, you are a dummy, what happens is that goes through our text cleaning, as you can see, the first stage removes the symbols. Then it goes to a tokenizer, which is basically using Spacey. This converts the string into actual string tokens, which in this case, it would be pronoun is dumb. And then from that perspective, you pass it through a vectorizer, which basically converts this component into vectors that then the model can learn. And then you can pass it to the model so that it can train that specific model which in this case, it would be predicting whether it's true, you know, it should have been moderated or false, it should not have been moderated. So this is basically the pipeline that we have uh, uh, trained. If you're interested on more about this data set and the model, we actually have a Jupyter Notebook uh, that delves into the exploratory data analysis. And this actually has a lot of really interesting insights of the data set that we use. We can delve into that for a little bit more detail. Now we have a model that we've trained. There's the question of how do we go from either the model weights or the code that we just created into a fully fledged microservice that has a RESTful API or a gRPC API, or in this context, a Kafka API, a Kafka interface, producing metrics, producing logs with all of the components that a microservice would require. And this is where we're gonna be using Selden Core, which is this framework that allows us to convert a piece of you know, code or artifact into a fully fledged microservice. And the, basically the general steps that are involved to actually containerize code is to first encapsulate it with a Python class that has basically an initialization where it loads the, the actual code or the actual model, and then a predict function, which is where we actually call our model. 
all of the input requests that you send are basically the ones that are passed to this function and the whatever is returned is basically on that microservice API. So ultimately we're able to use the Selden utilities to convert this wrapper into a actual Docker image that can then be deployed into the Kubernetes cluster that then can receive uh, REST requests, or in this case, the actual Kafka streaming topics to process from. And if you're curious, you can actually see in the link below is the full example of how to containerize this model, which it's basically a Jupyter notebook that will guide you to do that. The way that we actually build a wrapper, if you remember, we actually trained a couple of models in this wrapper in the initializing method, it actually just loads the pickle, or in this case, dill, it loads the train model that we actually created. And in the predict function, whenever you send a request or whenever a new uh, data point is added into the Kafka topic, then this actually passes all the way through each step of that pipeline. So the text cleaner, the tokenizer, the vectorizer, and the model to actually return a prediction, right? So this is basically building upon all of the different concepts that we touched upon uh, earlier in, in the slides. And now, okay, we have trained our model. We have containerized our model. How do we deploy it, right? So now in this case, we're gonna be looking at what the actual architecture is. And what we're gonna be having is we're gonna be using the Kafka queue with an input topic and an output topic. And as we deploy our Selden model, this Selden model will be able to consume using the Kafka native interface, will be able to consume from the input topic and produce the output into the topic itself. And you know, again, you can find the third example and last example of how you can actually use the Kafka interface in this notebook. But what we're gonna be seeing here is how do we actually deploy this? And with uh, Kubernetes, as you may already be familiar, you're, you deal with the actual YAML definitions. In this case, Selden provides you with a, uh, a YAML. Uh, in this case, it's a custom resource. Here we define the name of our deployment, which is called Reddit Kafka. We actually define that it's using a Kafka protocol. And then we actually specify that it's using the NLP model, that the, the NLP image that we built in the previous slide with the, with the tool sets. And ultimately we specify how it can talk to the Kafka cluster using the input topic, the output topic and the brokers. And then finally, you can actually specify that this model is the one that is being used. With Selden, you can actually define complex uh, graphs with multiple nodes, et cetera, et cetera. But in this case, we're only using a single node deployment. Once we actually provide that, we're able to then produce uh, 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 some data, in this case, using the Kafka console producer, um, which then as we pass some input uh, text, it would then be going into the input uh, topic. It would go through the actual cell and model, and then it would be produced to the output topic, which in this case, we would be able to uh, visualize using the Kafka console consumer. So in this case, uh, what we're able to actually get is all of the processed data points that have gone through the model. And even though right now we actually covered a broad range of different components, uh, all of this is available for you to actually try out in, in different steps, right? So if you're more interested, more on the machine learning side, you're able to delve further into that as opposed to if you're more interested in the deployment side, which, you know, it's all covered. Now, the key thing about this is at scale, right? Being able to scale this, this architecture horizontally and vertically. As you know, Kafka can actually scale in regards to number of brokers that allows for massive throughputs. And then similarly with Selden, it allows for horizontal scalability, which means that you can have multiple replicas that have a consumer group that then all are actually ingesting from the input topic and then ensuring that if one of the broker uh, uh, um, uh, you know, dies, then you have the different brokers. If one of the actual microservices dies, then you have the multiple different uh, brokers with the, with the consumer group. So again, this is very much a high level overview of the intuition, but you can delve into some of the examples that are provided in all of the, the links uh, below. And just as a reminder, uh, the, the slides are available on this link, bit.ly slash Selden Kafka. 
And these are the, um, the, the slides that will also contain the links for you to be able to access all of the examples. Now, with that said, today we co covered a conceptual introduction to stream processing. Um, you know, we delved into the machine learning model and the training. Uh, we, we covered some of the tools available and then we delved into both the containerization and the deployment of the Kafka pipeline. And with that said, uh, thank you very much for everybody that uh, joined this talk. And I look forward to taking questions. Uh, if anything, you know, you can, um, uh, you know, feel free to contact or reach out as I would be more than happy to provide any insights. And uh, as I mentioned, all of these examples are open source together with the projects, the underlying projects. So if you think of any potential improvements or anything that is in your mind, feel free to open an issue on the respective uh, GitHub repositories. And again, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, looking forward uh, to delve further into the discussion.